In this video, I'm going to share with you some study tips that you don't hear much about. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I am Hassan Kiko, a chemical engineering graduate from Russia. Yes, I studied in Russia using the Russian language. So with all these complexities, you know, of learning engineering in the Russian language, I was still able to go from getting, you know, few A's and some B's and I even got a C one time to getting A's through my studies. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some study tips that you can, you know, add up to what you know. In this video, I'm not going to be talking about how you should create a timetable, you know, avoid distractions, you know, uh, clear your working space. This is not what I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to talk about one or two things that you should add to your study techniques, which have proven to be effective. Now, the first one is going to be encoding. Some of you must have heard of it before, but I don't really see it being talked about in the study tips, study technique world. Encoding is, let me just put it in simple terms, is that is when you learn new information and you like connect it with what you already know. Like this is like the simplest way I can explain it. By encoding information, it helps you remember what you learned before and be able to know what you have been taught. Now, a lot of times the reason why we don't understand what we have been taught is because we cannot relate it with what we already know. But once you have a connection with what you already know, then you understand what you have been taught better. Always try to learn information by relating it with what you already know. Don't learn new information in isolation. That is more difficult to understand and even remember. When you're trying to encode information, it might be, you know, tasking in the beginning, but don't worry, it's a skill. Once you're used to it, you'll be able to like, understand your lecture like without taking much time sometimes you can understand your lecture without taking a lot of notes because you are making all these connections in your head which is very critical for understanding let's say for example in chemistry one of the first topics you are being taught is chemistry is the periodic table this is where they familiarize you with the elements and stuff so let's the first element is hydrogen then helium then lithium let's let me let me go a little technical now but just stay with me, stay with me. This is the point I'm trying to make. Hi hydrogen has one electron, then helium has two, lithium has three. So these electrons are arranged in a particular manner. This is the electronic configuration. So you, you understand that they are placed in electronic configurations. This is how we were taught in class. Then after you're taught this topic, you understand it, then maybe in like two, three weeks, they teach you another topic and they call it bonding. Bonding is when elements come together. Like the name of the topic suggests bonding. Elements bond together through the electronic configuration so that they can attain stability. Let me just put it that way. So as you are learning about bonding, instead of learning it from like a fresh new topic, uh, this is how elements come together. What you should try to do is connect it with what you know about elements. Like, okay, so the electronic configuration is helpful or let's say the arrangement of electrons is helpful when bonding this is where you know if it metallic bonding ionic bonding covalent bonding and so on so the point i'm trying to make is as you are learning always try to look for relationships this will help you create a bigger picture when you are studying always try to create the bigger picture of what you are learning in this case it will be easier for you to understand to be easier for you to even pass your tests and exams on the long run this leads me to the next one. You should try and use the Bloom's taxonomy when you're studying. So you're like, what is Bloom's taxonomy? Bloom's taxonomy is a framework that has six levels of learning from lower order learning to higher order learning. For lower order learning, this involves, you know, just remembering something or just trying to understand it. For example, you can, you can define it. You can list, you know, the types. You can state what it means like that or this is lower level learning it doesn't really change much it doesn't show us that you can apply all that then the higher level learning is where you can draw connections among ideas this is relating to encoding when you get information try and relate them together in this manner you have a you know better relationship of what you know it creates a bigger picture by going even higher we have uh, evaluation this is where you can argue on it you can defend it you can even judge on it and then the highest which is where you can produce new work you can produce original work this is where you can design assemble construct and so on 
So by incorporating this level of learning, it improves your study, it improves your understanding. So next time you get new information, try and process it from the higher order of learning. You might be like, how am I supposed to analyze, you know, evaluate and create something out of it? If I don't even understand it, I can't even remember what it means. When you're trying to apply higher level order learning, the lower level order learning takes place automatically. When you're working with information, your brain kind of, you know, understands it better. It can define it. It can remember it. It can apply it. So once you're working with higher order learning, like it's easy for you to understand what it means to remember it and so on. This is why I say this ties everything together. Encoding is like some sort of higher order learning because you are not just defining something, but you are relating it with other ideas to even understand it better. And this is where after you get the understanding, you can even add more to it. Like we said, you can argue on it, you can judge, you can even eventually create something, design something and so on. Now, the last one I want to add is that you should always reward your efforts. You know, studying for a lot of people is not interesting. It is boring. So you have to put like good things. You have to reward yourself. You have to put attractive things around it. So instead of just studying for long hours with no breaks, try and put breaks in between sessions. This is where the Pomodoro technique comes in. I've talked about it several times on this channel. I'm sure you must have heard of it. This is where you study for 25 minutes, for example. You study for a set amount of time, you focus, no distractions. Then you take a break for five minutes, for example. You can, for the five minutes, you can do whatever you want. Take a drink, make a call, scroll TikTok. Once the break is over, go back to your work, work for another 25 minutes, and then rest afterwards. In this case, you have in one hour, 15 minutes of productivity and five minutes of break. This is more effective than you studying for one hour, two hour, three hours with no break. And then that is not on the long run effective. Always take breaks to like rejuvenate, to bring back your energy. This in turn would make studying not like some boring activity for you, but at least you are taking breaks. So it's more friendly, more enjoyable for you. These are some of the tips that are used in school that help me get good grades. If you're looking for more study tips, especially now that we have AI, check out this video where I shared how ChatGPT can improve your studying. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got a lot of value from this. Signing off now. See you on the next one.